It's about time that we blaze it. Mm. Mm. Mario Mario. Mhm. Umeshi ndaje? Kotifi. Kotifi kabisa. Of course. Kasesh leo manze. Kanaweza. Manze tunaendelea. Mhm. So picking up uh, we are think let's call this um, part two mm-hmm. uh, of my journey yeah. of how I defeated um, depression. depression. Okay. So part one, we learned about um, a human being has two, two hearts. hearts. Yeah, so I yeah. remember. So let's go back to your vault in your head. Okay. Uh, what's the password? W-W-X-D-F-O-B-T-E-S-T. Mm-hmm. You see, told you. And I didn't repeat it. <laughs> you got it. Imagine. Mm-hmm. So, uh, human beings have two hearts. The number one is the emotional heart yeah. uh, that we learned about. Now, the second one is called the rational heart. Okay. And that's why uh, when you're mad, when you're angry, um, you're normally told, yeah. so don't be emotional. Don't be emotional. And think straight. Yeah. So the thinking straight is the rational heart. Okay. Yeah. Um, so knowing how to differentiate the two is very, very important to me personally through my journey of, uh, of depression. Uh, it was the first thing I learned mm-hmm. that I started. Like, you see, when, when you're really depressed and then the first step, I remember it's hard for you to, to actually pinpoint and say, this is how I started healing from depression. This was the first thing. Okay. So to me, th- that was the first thing, the first step of healing from depression, understanding that you have two hearts, two hearts. and knowing how to, to, to differentiate. So... If you're in a situation, a sticky situation, I'm going to in a whatever moment, I'm you're really depressed about something, mm-hmm. uh, just do the, uh, the WWXDFOB TSD. Yeah. You get, do the test, do the thing on the, the belly. Thing test. On the belly. E- and then you ask yourself, in this situation, am I feeling pain? Before I make the decision, is, um, it, is the pain coming from here or am I thinking, thinking rationally? Yeah. Am I thinking straight? Or is this a, an emotional decision I'm, I'm, I'm making? Yeah. Am I being emotional about the situation? Or thinking rationally, does it make sense yeah. to be bothered about this? Okay. Do I have the power to change what's happening? Or I really do not have the power? You see, in most cases, you're bothering yourself with, with stuff that's actually just bothering your emotional heart. Yeah. That really does not make any sense you whatsoever. You have no power to change. Yes. Now, around that time, something Mm -hmm. interesting happened. Remember, you're still on my story of how I got cured from uh, from depression. Yes, nakumbuka. Nakumbuka tuko pamoja. Mali mali, ata ni kupeleke. Mida za around June, July. Okay. July of 2022. I was made in this thing, made in the depression. You got me? Uh, Deep, deep, deep. Deep, manzi. Deep. Deep in this depression thing. So, and I remember I saw a picture and I've, I've actually brought this picture for you to see. Okay. Now, this is a picture that was taken. Uh, it's the first ever picture the world has ever seen of... Um, how do I put this? It is, it is, it is the, farthest, the, the, uh, the farthest place from the earth. Okay. A picture that was taken the farthest place ever from the earth. A distance of 7,500 light Yes. Okay. Now, for you to better understand light years, you see, the problem with knowledge is it has a lot of uh, uh, lingo. There are a lot of um, yeah, things of that, that make this knowledge thing a bit hard for everyone to understand. So I want to break this down for you because it's just a chilled out. Mm. Okay. I want to take you slowly. So uh, this picture you see, is uh, is how uh, it was taken by this amazing telescope known as the James Webb. Mm. Nayona. Nayona, Nayona. Yeah, yeah. So this picture is seven thousand five hundred light years. Okay. Uh, for you to better understand what light years are, mm-hmm. one light year is approximately nine trillion kilometers. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. 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 Ukusawa! 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 
Najua nikiwa juu ya sahani sitakangi story mob. Hata <laughs> unajua. Sasa alafu unajua leo wewe ndio nani? Adi teacher. <laughs> eh ima mbo sijui light ya sijui heavy ya sijui nini unajua mimi sijui bwana tu nimepiga <laughs> kisani kiangu nitulie nikusikize kiangu i think imeingia shimo mbaya imeingia shimo good Isa jo buda isa jo isa jo. Ola yo aba. Ko bien ko bien. Ah. Ko bien. Eh bro. Mimi nitakwambia. Zile zinaingia ngashi mumba. Ndio inakwanga imendi. Ndio imendi. Ndio. Ukiko hoko ndio dalili ya kunyo. Bro unajiona nasema imendi. 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 Okay back to it. Freaking hell. Let's get going. Josh bro. Mm. Let's get easy. So this picture mm-hmm. that I showed you is um 7500 light years away from the earth. Okay. Epita. <coughs> An interesting fact about this picture mm-hmm. is that the first time it was seen mm-hmm. by anyone on earth it was actually seen in Malindi. Here in Kenya. Did you know that Kenya has an international space station in Malindi? Mm. Yes, we do. We've actually, I think, launched a couple of uh, space missions. Uh, but the most important thing about the story is, uh, and, and that's what grabbed me. So after I discovered about the human having two hearts, mm-hmm. uh, I think about that time I saw this picture. And it was trending. And the reason that's why I captured my attention is because it was initially taken in Kenya, in Malindi, but it was sent to the U.S. to be approved okay. before it was released by NASA. Mm-hmm. Are you getting me? Yeah. So when I saw these pictures, I was like, wow, what the hell what is the this? this? Yeah, what the hell is this? So <laughs> this picture is just of, uh, of clouds, of clouds of, of dust and gases, 7,500 light years away. Um, so what is a light year? I've told you, one light year is equal to nine, uh, approximately nine mm, trillion, trillion kilometers. Now the problem is that we... we, we we really throw around these words a million, a billion, mm. a trillion, and but do we really know the magnitude of these words? Okay. Let me break it down to you. Or for you, I mean. Um so a million shillings, uh let's no, let's let's do dollars. Okay. Yes. You see a dollar note, one dollar note. One dollar. Huh? If you put a dollar note on top of each other, um for a million, a million, a million you can you can you can do um, a height of maybe a dining a dining uh, a, dining a, a dining room chair uh. that's roughly a meter so if you're putting a dollar a dollar note yeah. one by one by one you can get to the height of uh, a, a one meter dining uh, dining table chair okay. so that's the height of a that, that's how much a million dollars is stacked oh. together oh. you get it okay <clears throat> talking about that's a million Dollars. Let's talk about yeah. a, a billion. So how billion. how big is a billion? So a billion is. You see, uh, let me let me look for. Um, let me let's do this. KICC mm-hmm. best example. So the KICC is around a hundred meters, yeah. about a hundred and two hundred meters okay. tall. Uh, um, if you're stacking up a dollar note on top of each other, you need to stack it up to around a, a, a kilometer high. So I'm talking about a roughly. 10 KICCs stacked up together, one by one by one. If you're putting a, a, a dollar note, that's a billion. Ah, 10 KICCs. 10 KICCs. <clears throat> Are we still together? Uh, let's talk about a trillion. How much is a trillion? How big is a trillion? Okay. Um, do you know about the International Space Station? Uko penye NASA wako where 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 they're actually doing some some international just Shit, stuff. Uh-huh. Shit, just watching how earthlings are doing in this small globe. A small karok. Ka- like a small karok that is magnetized <laughs> pulling us together. Are, are you getting me? Okay. So uh, fr- the distance between the earth mm-hmm. and the International Space Station is roughly uh, roughly roughly <laughs> what, 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 
the distance uh, 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 is, uh, 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 is roughly. It's roughly. <laughs> are we to, are, but are we still together? Of course. Mm -hmm. So the distance uh, from the Earth to the International Space Station is roughly 400 kilometers. Okay. Yes. A, a trillion dollars stacked on top of each other would go to around a thousand kilometers. So I'm talking about if you're stacking up one by one, a dollar each on top of each other, you'd stack it up from the ground where we are one by one by one, you even cross the Burj Khalifa, tallest building on, on the earth. Oh, you go through the atmosphere, you go through whatever. You get in the International Space Station, stacking up the dollars one by one. Okay. Once you get there, then you start again from the top. You what come you back imagine? down until you get to the ground. When you get there, you go up again halfway. It's uh, a thousand kilometers. Two and a half. Two and a half times. Now, that's a trillion dollars stacked up one by one. Now, if you're talking about a light year, one light year, are you understanding how big a trillion is? One light year is equal to nine trillion kilometers. Now, this picture I'm showing you was taken 7,500 light years away. From Earth. From Earth. Now, this telescope is huge uh -huh. for you to take such pictures. It's huge. Right, right now, it's orbiting the Earth uh, around 1.5 million kilometers away in a Zunguka to just going around the Earth uh -huh. with this amazing uh, big lens just scouring and looking at other life forms. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because you see the telescope in itself can, can look at, I think, 13, around 13 billion light years away. Uh -huh. 13, not 100, mm. not 1,000, not 13 million, 13 billion light years, light years away. away. Remember, a light year is equal to 9, nine trillion, trillion kilometers. So this is 13 billion eh. light years. That telescope, 6,000 kgs orbiting around the I Earth. How big is that thing? It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. I eh. think it went up around December, uh, Christmas of 2021, if I'm not wrong. Great. It was a Christmas gift, I remember. Around 3 p.m., we went on Twitter Live to check out the launch of the James Webb Web telescope. telescope. It's a huge thing. Okay. And I was really intrigued by the James Webb because of the fact that this photo that I'm showing you was taken 7,500 light years away from Earth. And it first hit the Earth in Malindi. And then it was sent to the U.S., then NASA released it on the official government website. Okay. So this photo, when I saw it, I was like, wow. What's this? What the hell is this? It's what huge. Is I understand the James Webb right now, but tell me what the freaking hell is happening in this photo. Mm -hmm. So that was the time I was just getting into depression. And one of the things, <coughs> I'm sorry. It's a Sunny, 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 sunny. Good, good. So one of the things I learned through my depression period is to keep my brain busy okay. with things that are not uh, that are currently stressing me. That's one one of the things I I, I learned when you're really depressed about something. <coughs> mm -hmm. Try to think something different. If a death is disturbing you, mm -hmm. try to keep your mind busy about something. Do do something that you far from death. Far from death. Something really keep you engaged. Mm -hmm. You got me? <coughs> so when I almost jumped over the cliff and I was looking for something, I saw this picture and I was like, yeah, let me let me do research. For the first time ever, it looks interesting. And to me it was really interesting because the picture was first seen in Kenya. I get you. And nobody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. They're not giving Kenya the credit, credit. it deserves. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to tell you so much about Kenya throughout the story. What I discovered about Kenya. Ah, another important thing about this picture. Now, why it's important? Because it actually shows uh, a glimpse of how um, a, a galaxy is forming 7,500 light years away. Remember, one light year mm -hmm. is... Nine trillion kilometers. So this picture is 
7,500 years, light years away. And it's showing how the stars mm -hmm. are actually forming, forming. How, how that there's a oh, galaxy yeah. forming. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me, let me bring you back. I'm, 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 I'm throwing some huge words like stars, galaxies. I want to simplify it so, 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 so easy. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so this picture is very important, not just because it was taken mm -hmm. here in Malindi. My nigga, Malindi, my nigga. Mm -hmm. But because it actually shows how um, a galaxy that's 7,500 light years away is actually From forming. Earth. You see, yeah. this is a very young galaxy it's forming. And one thing you need to understand is that the universe where all of us are consists of nothing less than 125 billion galaxies. Huh? B billion, yes. Now you understand what billion is. Our 10 KICCs. I remember. Uh, you remember? Yeah, I do. I do yeah, so I do. 125 billion Wait. galaxies within our universe. So to bring it home for you to better understand, okay. the galaxy that we are in is called the Milky Way. Way I know you've heard I think that. I've heard that name. Yes, yes, yes. The I Milky. It's, it's, a, it's not a, a new name. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So our galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, the Milky Way galaxy, uh, where we are right now, mm -hmm. is is roughly um, around thirteen billion years old. So the galaxy that we uh, we're in was formed thirteen billion, billion years, ago. years ago. So this one that you're actually seeing is it's it's like forming. it's forming right now. And from this we can actually see how galaxies form. Because remember our galaxy is just number one. It is the first note, that first dollar note on the ground. And remember we're doing ten K I C C S you guys. Uh. You see for a billion. And now we have like hundred and twenty five uh, like that, 10 KICCs, now 125 of them. Wait, so, <laughs> so it, in short, yes. the universe does not just consist of in any solar system. No, 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 no. So no, even no. this thing of people saying like we have different other galaxies. Yes, other? yes, 125 billion other galaxies and the galaxies that we're, we're in the one that we all yeah. know uh, uh, that has um, uh, um, the, uh, sun. The, the sun the moon earth, earth. and then you have pluto uh, uranus uh, satan, satan jupiter jupiter you get this shit <laughs> so, so that's the Milky Way <laughs> galaxy mm -hmm. and that's just the first one of 125 billion wow okay unani now uh, the Milky Way is around, th as I said, 13.6 billion, billion mm -hmm. years old. Yes. And that the radius of the Milky Way, because the, the universe is big, but mm -hmm. our, our, our caportion, just one in the 125 billion, okay. that ca one caportion, the radius of where we are, the mm -hmm. sun, the moon, uh, Earth, Pluto, Uranus, Satan, <laughs> and all these other planets. Uh, uh, it, it, it's roughly, I can say, around 52,000 light years. You see, a radius of 52,000 light years. Our galaxy. Yes, our galaxy. And remember, okay. a light year is 9, nine trillion, trillion kilometers. Yeah. So 52,000 times 9 trillion, trillion for you to get the radius yeah. of where we are, where, where the sun, the moon, earth, Pluto, your anus, Satan, <laughs> and all the other uh, stuff in the galaxy. Yeah, in, in the Milky Way, yeah. you understand? Yeah. So that is around 13.6 billion years ago. So this picture that you're seeing actually shows a cloud of dust and gases. So how, how, how scientists, in a very simplified, let me just kill all professional scientific jargons and everything for you to better understand, yeah. in a simplistic way. Okay. So this picture you're seeing is just a cloud of dust and gases. So when they come together and, 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 and whatever chemical reactions happen, so when these compounds mix, some of them solidify. Okay. We're yes. still together. Yes. So when they, so yes, when they solidify and they continue solidifying and then form something like a mound of some solid of some sort. Okay. You get me? Yeah. Over time and over years, as it's moving farther and farther as the chemical reaction now uh, slow down, dies mm -hmm. down, cools, cools down, down, becomes now a rock. Okay. And when that rock continues now, maybe uh, 
when it's forming, it's very hot because of the um, chemical, chemical reaction. Yeah. So it's brightest when it's hot. So all this dust and, 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 and gas is coming together, as you can see on this picture, uh, when the, all that reaction from far away and they're forming all these solids coming together, when you can see it from far away, that's what you can call from Earth and layman's term, a star. Ah. So that's a star. That's a star. Yes. So basically, um, that's how um, uh, galaxies and, and planets kind of a, a kind of form come, yeah, come about. Are we together? Yeah. Yes. So this picture, when I saw it, it really pushed me. So when I understood how the galaxies form from the cloud of dust to the gases come together, chemical reactions and all this happening. And then when it cools down, the chemical reactions cool down, it forms something like a rock. And then the rock cools down over the years. It, 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 it kind of like uh, the rocks come together, mix up and form this huge mound Ish. of whatever. And then you form planets basically that's, oh, that's how planets yeah that's how our solar system so PIE, yeah, yeah it was to go up and really yes. and from this ah. picture now scientists could to, could be able to now to see and understand how the galaxies were formed remember um with the galaxy we're in the milky way is just one in 125 billion. billion so the earth is very very small. very small it's very very small, small. that's why someone uh, yeah. it's, the earth is really really small, small. hey we have a all those galaxies. <coughs> yes, 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 yes. So when I understood all these things, remember, I'm still in my depression state. You get me? So this yeah. is one of the things that I was using and it in intrigued me. It captured my brain. So I, I, I dug deep and the deeper I dug, I felt a bit uh, less depressed, a bit less stressed because I wasn't thinking about the things that were disturbing me. And the oh, things. you were thinking about other things. Yes, I was thinking about the galaxy and the solar system and now understanding what a million I mean, is, what a billion yeah, is and I all these you. things that I'm just sharing with you and opening my, my, my mind step by step uh -huh. um, uh, led me to even research more and, and want to understand. No, I, I've understood. I've really understood how, how the world uh, came Works, about. Yeah. And, and in short, have you ever, uh, have you ever uh, asked yourself uh, what the Big Bang Theory, theory. is? That's that. What I was, that is what I was, I was about to ask you. <laughs> is it yes. the I Big just, Bang Theory? Yes. I Even just, though in I just explained to you the Big Bang Theory. As I did. So this picture actually shows the Big Bang Theory ah. and explains it. And the beauty is that it actually was taken in Malindi. Imagine. So I wanted, um, I wanted to, uh, to understand more about mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. You see, not just how the galaxies were formed. Now, I, I was intrigued. My mind was blowing up. I was just seeing everything. Over, yeah. I was just seeing the world like a, a, a like, like the Matrix, man. Like you Neo, taking the red pill. My nigga, when Neo was just yanked out and then brought into, in, 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 into, into the, 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 the it's, it's called the what? Uh, the, the, the ship. It's called the, uh, the Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> The Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Remember, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you find my Of course. Yeah, yeah. Morpheus' ship is called the Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. So, my nigga, me was feeling like Neo, man. Mm. At the moment um, that. Um, who? Morpheus yanked him out of the uh -huh. Matrix. And the Nebuchadnezzar, man, nigga. Uh -huh. So, me, I'm looking at, at the world like. Like an open canvas, like man, I need to understand more. Yeah. And the more I was digging, the more I was learning, I understood that I could I was actually using my research as a tool to keep and yank my mind away from the things that were that actually were disturbing, you. disturbing in me and causing me all this pain, dep the pain and depression. Because I was thinking so much about questions that I didn't have answers, answers to. to. You get me? Yeah. So I wanted to understand what is a human being? What is a human being? They forget for religion, forget, forget about, about everything. everything. Now I wanted to understand what a is the human, human being? being? What is this earth that we live in? How old is this earth? Uh, uh, I, I wanted to understand. Okay, who am I? Uh, who am I? I understand that the, uh, the Milky Way is around 13 billion years uh, old. And then I was like, okay, okay, so how old is the earth? And in my depth, of the research, I found out that that, that, that the Earth and the and the other planets uh, like uh, like uh, like Pluto, Uranus, yes. Saturn, Saturn. Uh, Jupiter, Jupiter, you you Mars. get me, Mars and all the other. Uh, I found out roughly four point five billion years old. 
our earth and yes, earth. Okay. yes 4.5 billion yeah. years old you get me oh, yeah. and then I went deep in my research oh this next step wowed me it mm-hmm. impressed me it mm-hmm. made me want to dig deeper my nigga mm-hmm. my nigga my nigga in 2000 in the year 2000 we had two french uh, there's a french paleontologist who came what am i saying palahuna paleontologist yes is a paleontologist french palahuna the french paleontologist who came to Kenya mm-hmm. went all the way to Tugen Hills, <coughs> deep forest of Tugen, my nigga. Uh-huh. And in Tugen Hills, they found this amazing uh, old fossil. Okay. Hmm? The, old, yeah. the fossil was predated to uh, around six million years old. It is actually the oldest fossil on planet Earth oh, th- to prove that Kenya is indeed the cradle, the of, cradle man- of mankind. <laughs> And that is a time no, we've owned. Do you, huh? you know, Kenya's found the most number of fossils of to, course, prove of that, uh, to prove that, to prove the, to actually help scientists piece together how human beings evolved. Evolved, yeah. And Kenya is leading in the pack. And we found something dating back to six million years. Crazy, man. I, w- I was intrigued, man. I was uh, proud yes, uh, to I be Kenyan. I have a question. Mm. Was it like uh, the... Iyo enye ilipatikana huko, six million years. Mm-hmm. Was it like the man wa kutembea na two legs ama the... Um, Tugenensis meaning uh, from Tugen. Tugen Hill, yes. And yeah. Ororin meaning the original man. Now, this is the native language, yeah. the Tugen language. Okay. Um, the paleontologist actually named in the, in the native language. Okay. Ororin means original man. Original. So this, this was the original man. This was somebody who was walking with both feet using hands to actually work and move around and do some chores and start building up the basic rudimentary tools that were used to build to where we are right now. You get me? Mm-hmm. So I was intrigued. I was like, wow, my nigga. So that was six million years ago. Okay. You get me? Uh-huh. So man initi- initially was an animal. Yeah, of course. You get me? Yeah. And we all know man we is animal. We all know we were... Uh, man is animal. <laughs> and what, does me, w- w- what makes an animal an animal? The five senses. So the five senses of a human being are seeing, feeling, hearing, tasting, and smelling. But yeah. all animals have this other sixth sense that is hidden. Okay. And that is the sense... Uh, the sense... That is... That is the sense... <laughs> Mm. And that is the sense, the sixth sense that each and every animal has. Okay. Onani Panta, mm-hmm. what is an animal? Let me bring you back because we need to understand what an animal is. I want to, I'm taking you through the steps I took to understand myself. Yeah. Remember, this is the exact step I used to pull myself out of depression. I wanted to understand the basics of how the world, the universe, and man. So what's an animal? I don't know. A living thing. Exactly. Exactly. I'm I'm right. A living, breathing being. You're correct. It's a living and a breathing thing. Yeah. Something that breathes. Has a life. Has life and it breathes. And then it, 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 it breathes. Mm. That is an animal. And for every animal, it has these five senses that we've talked about. Yeah. But there's a sixth one that each and every animal has that is hidden. A dog has it. Mm-hmm. Chicken have it. Uh-huh. A cow has it. What are the animals you know? Humans. Humans have it. <laughs> Apart from humans. <laughs> A pig. Yes, a pig has it. What What do you think the sixth sense is? Mm-hmm. Fear. Fear. Ata sinjangonja uzeni. Ningonja. Sinjangonja. Sinjangonja uzeni. It is fear. You come to think about it. Yeah. About it. Yeah, I'm about, yeah, I'm about dating. I'm about dating. Yeah, I'm about it. I come to think I'm about it. Yes, fear. Fear is the sixth sense that each and every animal has. Okay. 
You get me? Yeah. A dog will run away if you shout at it. Mm. A cat will. A cow. Think about yeah. it. Every animal, even a human being, is an animal. Yeah. You're gonna run away. A takimbia. Takimbia is gonna run away. Fear. And I wanted Maybe to understand way, yeah. fear. What is fear? What is fear? Because everything is controlled by fear. What is this thing called fear? Mm-hmm. So we've said the sixth sense is fear. Mm-hmm. Remember, an animal is a living and a breathing, breathing being. Yeah. If you're living and you're breathing, it means you have something Sense. like blood that is flowing, flowing, a heart or some sort of thing that is pumping blood, of pumping the fluid that are moving around your, your body. Yeah. You, you, you get me? Yes. The fluids of the blood, whatever, is going around your of body. Course. yeah. You're a living being. Yeah. You have a heart. Or there's, a, there's a mechanism of some certain fluid to pass through your body to, to keep the motion going. going yeah. There's life. Yeah. You're getting me? Yeah. If you have a heart, remember, I'm going to bring you back to your mind, your, 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 your mind, uh, what we call it? Safe. Your mind safe. What, what, what do we do? What do we do? What do we lock in your mind safe? Um, that we have two hearts. Thank you. That was the first thing we, we locked. locked. Yeah. So every animal has Two hearts. Okay. Are you understanding? Yeah. Are we t- together? Pamoja. Yes. And fear is felt by your second heart. The emotional heart. The one. emotional heart. Mm-hmm. Love is felt by the emotional, the emotional heart. heart. So I'm saying some good, nice, sweet things. You're feeling some warmth down yeah. there. Yeah. And then some hurtful, painful thing. Yeah. There. If you feel fear, it will first strike you there. Yeah, that I hard. Get you. I get you. You get me? Yeah, Kabsa. Still together? Together. Good. Now, how... Let me bring you back. Mm-hmm. How did animals deal with fear? Before all this, how do you think animals were dealing with fear? Before, uh, before um, civilization, before us moving and urbanizing and moving to the cities and everything. How, how do you think when we were animals just six minutes, Ororin, how do you think uh, our nigger Ororin was doing back then? Fear. Yes, fear. So you flight <laughs> or you fight. <laughs> it's either you fight or you run away. Yeah. Yes. Back then, animals and, and up to now, how animals deal with fear, the number one way of dealing with fear is by coming together as a group. Okay. Living together as a pack. Oh, yeah. True. You get me? Yeah. You, you live together fear, as a pack. Yeah. That's how you conquer fear. Yeah. If someone would, would, would try to mess with anyone, a member of the pack, the alpha would come out. Mm. The alpha would be <clears throat> mm-hmm. protecting the whole pack. Yeah. And behind the alpha, we have the beta. Yeah. And you have all these other beasts behind the alpha, the warriors now, defending the pack. Mm-hmm. And that's how they've defended and uh, overcame fear. Now, when man came, man started uh, living in communities. Mm-hmm. Are, we, are we together? Man, man lived in communities yeah. together in small villages. That's how they fought fear. Yeah. When they go out, you go out in, 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 groups. in, in groups, two or three. That's how you fight fear. Yeah. And over time, when we started urbanizing, uh, you see, we're still animals. Remember. And I want you to open up your safe. What's the password? W-W-X-D-F-O-B-T-E-S-T. Mm-hmm. Okay, open it. Mm-hmm. And I want you to lock in the fact that you're an animal. Yeah, sure. Two things. I want you to clear out the safe. Now we're cleaning up the safe, weekly cleaning up or monthly cleaning up. Mm-hmm. So I want you to put in just two things. The fact that you have two hearts and uh-huh. you have, you're an animal. Okay. Okay. Lock your safe. I got locked. Good. Let's get out of there. Mm-hmm. I've brought you from the Milky Way, how everything was formed. We've come to the earth. We've come to Ororin. Ororin Mr. To Ororin. Genesis. I've yeah. explained to you how Ororin was surviving and conquering fear. Yeah. Ororin was living with communities of people now. We, 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 we've, we, we are now developing. You see, mm-hmm. nigger for two feet, I get you, standing up, nigger, for the first time. Mm-hmm. Nigger is standing up for himself, my nigger. 
the mm. only animal, the first animal to literally stand up for him for themselves. Mm -hmm. Ororin stood up. Akbata. But how is Ororin conquering fear? Living in communities now. Yes. You see, as as urbanization continued, um, these people are uh, intermarrying, interliving, and moving, and doing all the all inter fluids and whatever <laughs> they were doing. I just entering. <laughs> so they're entering, entering. <laughs> you get me. <laughs> so as time moved, uh -huh. urbanization came. Yeah. And that's how we, as uh, uh, as animals. Started now urbanizing, started now wearing evolving, clothes, yeah. evolving. Um, uh, now started moving to the, uh, started building cities, industrialization, yeah. the internet came, the computers and everything, the smartphones. Yes, okay. and everything. Now we're talking about Web 3.0 mm -hmm. and cryptocurrencies and all these things. Yeah. You get? Yeah. So right now, I've just fast forwarded you from the Big Bang Theory and we are soup right now. Yeah. But remember, you're still a stir, stir. <laughs> stir. <laughs> you're still an animal. <laughs> but remember, you're still an animal. Yeah, of course. Dip down. You're still an animal. Two things in your mental vault. What are they? Number one? You have two hearts. Two hearts. You're emotion. You're an emotional being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And number two. You're an animal. You're an animal. You yeah. still have fear. Yes. You got me. Yeah. So how do you control fear in the city? In the city, it's either you're dating. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's either, um, it's either you you're depending on your parent because are uh, you living as a pack? Mm -hmm. You're living together as a you, you're being taken care of by someone. There's an alpha taking uh, care of. Uh, even if you live alone, even you if have you, neighbors. Even if you're living alone, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to there. Oh. Before we get to living alone, I'm getting there. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, when you're living uh, in the city, you're living as a group. Yeah. You see? Yeah. But even holistically, if you're living alone, uh, you're living in an apartment. You're not living in a, in a forest alone in a deserted place. Yeah. I think that's what you, you, want, you wanted to mean. Yeah. But I'm going to go deeper inside that. Okay. So, it sounds very wrong, man. Deeper, deeper inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to get deeper. deeper. Mm. So in the city, you, you, you kill the fear by living in communities. Yeah. You can be living alone. So let's talk about the, the holistic fear before we talk about the personal fear. Because yes. these are two things that I also discovered through my period of self-discovery and pulling myself of depression. I discovered there are two types of fear. There's the holistic community fear and there's the personal fear. Yeah, Remember, okay. we are emotional beings who have two hearts and then we are animals. Yeah. Got me? Yeah. So in the city, the communal fear is killed by living together as a as a community. Yeah. Mm. Apartment. In a city. In a city. Yeah. You're not living alone. You're not alone you're like not in a forest. You're not in a forest or living like only you and then like a thousand acres away is your neighbor. Ah. No, 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 no. You don't live like carry the cowardly dog. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> Which you feel, bro? Yeah. yeah. So you live with the neighbors at the communal fear. You kill it because you're living together. Yeah. There's a the fear that you, alone you cannot survive. Yeah. The supplies, the food, the shoe leather, the Security. need, the job, you cannot survive alone. Yeah. And together, it works. It Remember, makes you stronger. We are animals. Yeah, yeah. Now let's get to the personal fear. Mm -hmm. Now we get to the personal fear as an animal. How do you personally kill that fear? Uh -huh. In the pack, in the wild, what animals do, you run where the community is. is. Okay. So you can be living alone in an apartment, but you're living in an apartment that has like many houses. Yeah. You're living alone in an abandonment. Uh, in, in an abandonment. <laughs> 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 in an abandonment. Every, ti every time I just do this. I gotta do this. You know. hmm? uh. So you ain't leaving. You're living in an apartment yeah. that is abandoned. You get me? Yeah. You're living with people around you. You have neighbors. Of course. You have everything. You have a shop. Mm. You know what I get? Yeah. You're not living alone. No, but in Nairobi, big cities, you, you can't. You can be living alone in the house, but you have a neighbor. Yeah. Uh, who brings a kachipo, who does whatever. <laughs> yeah, you, get, you get me? Yeah. Of course. 
Yeah. So how do you kill that fear? You ki- as, a, as, as a lone wolf. The personal fear. As a lone fool, lone lone fool, wolf, with the freaking hell. The nini leo? What is he doing, bro? Let me see. Come on. Let's say the magic. Hey, bro. Oh. So as a lone wolf, mm-hmm. how the hell do you kill that fear? Unai malizaje. Mhm. Ni angela di ko ta kuti akamane. Si juna di bamba. Uko solo as a lone wolf. Yeah. So you kill this fear by looking for a spouse as an animal. Okay. You look for a mate. You look for someone, a friend or something. That's why you see a best animal, friend. Like, like like dogs like, love running when they're two. Yeah. Cats too. You look you, you don't want to be alone. That's how you kill personal fear as a, as a cat, as a dog or even chicken. Remember, don't bring one. If you're, if you're a farmer, even if you were if you're someone who keeps animals, if you keep one uh pet by itself chances are high it might die out of boredom yeah you get me yeah. if you if you have one cat in the house it will keep on running away yeah true it's afraid of staying alone true it's an animal we yeah. forget it's it gets bored it needs it gets someone. tired it gets hungry it's an animal it needs a partner yes so it runs and gets another cat to play paka milo disco <laughs> Grab big big. Your name is Gavin Zuri. Konda Kendos. Konda Kendos. Chapa Kendos. Ah. Ne pige. Ne pige sahani. Pige sahani mtu wangu. Kunda ski sahani mtu wangu. Oh. You got me? I get you. So, so animals do. Mm-hmm. Cats, dogs, they do that. Chicken, they do that. Pigs, every animal. Cats get lonely, you kill the personal fear by running towards another another one. You see? Have you ever seen a lone a lone goat or 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 cow? Let me say a lone or a stray uh, behind left behind when the pack is is ahead and then maybe a car is passing hoots and then you see this cow goat running yeah. trying to catch up with the pack because it's afraid. Mm. That's what animals do. do. You run towards another one. True, true. Now let's bring you back to this big animal mm-hmm. called the human being. So what do you do? You run, you get If you're a lone wolf, you uh, you try to get a spouse, you try to get someone. If you do not get someone, you try to form emotional connections with a cat. Yeah. A dog. Dogs, yeah. A pet because you're lonely. But that levels of fear. There's that fear that would make you go get Uh, as a human being get uh, a partner who just help you kill the easy fear and dogo dogo za kufala see kuna easy fear za kufala and i call them stupid uh, fears za kufala uh, like the i call it two second shower fear when you get in the shower and you're wiping out and washing out your eyes uh, off the soap, soap. man nigga man nigga man nigga it feels like it's an hour man nigga And at that point you feel like there's somebody who's just gonna smack the living light out of your eyes my nigga. Mm. Bah! Slap the soap out of your face and just give you a proper whooping. At that point you feel like the the devil himself is, is just behind you it's and about you to scare and you. you can literally feel, feel. the warmth. No more oh my nigga you can just feel the hair standing on your back and the, the warmth and you can literally just feel like the hand is just moving towards your face and quickly you just wipe your eyes off with the water my nigga look at it like oh shit it was just two seconds two freaking seconds yes that mm. is the greatest fear in the world second to no fear No. That is the fear. Um all animals have noticed have the human being has it. Uh-huh. Um most human beings have this fear and I used to have it myself. See that fear when you're alone in a dark room and then uh-huh. you feel like there's somebody standing at a certain corner. And you can actually see that. And you can literally see True. that person. True. <sighs> My nigga. Mm. When the lights are out, you can feel 
<laughs> see, you've watched too much, uh, too much Afro movies, my nigga. Me when I was young, me a kid, you know. This Afro movie I watched, my nigga, where <coughs> there's this coughing that was coming down from the corner of the house. Okay. So every time the lights used to go off, it's wherever I culture. was, I was seeing a coffin on the right side of that uh, house in a shuka pole pole coffin in a white in a mook, in a and I used to vividly see, see that. It. Ah, that thing fucked me up, my nigga. <laughs> it screwed me up growing up. I re- literally <laughs> messed up my mind. Those movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, Afro, man, nigga. Oh, Akina Karishika. Mm-hmm. Akina Nani. Ka, ka, kanayo. Kanayo, oh, Kanayo. Oh, Kaltic movies. movies. <laughs> ah, those movies done messed me up, man, nigga. Oh, so I remember g- I grew up seeing coffins going down in every dark room that I used to go. Uh-huh. But the magical thing is that when you switch on the light, ah, in Apotia. Get lost. Yeah. Every human being <laughs> is afraid of the dark. Of course. Yes. Of course. If you look outside the window, mm-hmm. you'd see someone peeping uh, in, a, in a certain bush or tree looking yeah. at you. Like some, you have a stalker. Yeah. Eyes are looking at you. And you can literally feel the no, eyes looking at you. That's how powerful your brain is. Mm-hmm. Your brain is so powerful to the point that it actually placed a second heart. In your body, and I pointed directly at the second heart. Yeah. Are you understanding the power of the brain? Not quite. The brain can make you feel something, <laughs> or rather, the brain can withhold pain okay. for a certain period if you do not notice. How many times have you cut yourself to the point that you've re- you, you, you've actually just healed? The blood is dry, and then you're like, oh. Where's this blood coming from? Who, who bled on me? It looks like some dry blood. When you look yourself, you, you cut yourself. You didn't notice. Yeah. That's how powerful, powerful. the brain is. Okay. Are we still together? Now remember, that I, I'm still telling you my story, what, what, what I was discovering. Of so course. All this is what I was discovering of and course. what the brain was and how what fear was. Yeah. And I was really intrigued about this thing called fear because the more I understood about fear, I understood perfectly that the human being is controlled by fear. Mm-hmm. Fear is the anchor of everything. Everything. If you... <laughs> fear is what is holding down everything in your life. Okay. I discovered that. It's fear. Everything is rooted down to fear. The fear of the unknown. Yeah. What's going to happen? Am I going to have a baby? <laughs> I got a to poor today. They say to poor. They say to poor. They just say to poor, man. Nigga. Man, you just say to poor, man. You got a to poor today. What is that? I'm going to have a freaking to poor. No, that's a man got to poor. What are you talking about? You're going to have a baby, but a to poor, man. I'm going to have a baby. Before that, I'm going to have a baby. 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 So, <laughs> I got a to water today, and there's a lady who says she's um, 27 years. You get me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the lady is afraid of giving birth. She really, really wants to have a baby, and she's afraid she is growing old. Uh-huh. The problem is she has the fear of, of, of the baby. It's coming with the fear of the unknown. How is our baby going to look? I remember, look? <laughs> I remember you know, when our baby came... That was the, b- I think, as, as, as parents. That I was the best thing. The <laughs> biggest fear every parent will tell you is how the baby's baby face look. is going to look like. Oh my goodness. You would, ope, you will never but the face, my nigga. You'll never know. The face you will never know. I mm. have, I have. Mm. Very rude friends. Mm. Please. Please. <laughs> I have friends who will judge me. I have very honest I, friends. I have very bitterly <laughs> honest friends who will not spare, who will not ruthlessly <laughs> spare <laughs> me with the truthful fact of how my baby looks like. Okay, please. Please. Please, please. I, please come out perfectly. Uh. That is the biggest fear ever. Young parent and the f- L- let me just say every parent. Not even young. Every not parent. even not even young. Every parent has. How, how is your baby gonna look? So life has taught me to only concern myself about the things that I can 
have control over. Mm -hmm. And in depth in my research, now getting deeper and understanding what an animal is and what fear is, and understanding uh, that fear is what controls human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, fear is what makes you not change. Fear will make you not take that promotion. Fear yeah. will make you not make that fast move and tell somebody, I love, love you. you. I love you. I want you. I need you. You're the one, baby. You know what I'm saying? Fear will hold you back from promotions. Fear will hold you back from... Getting out of your comfort zone. Getting out of your parents' house. Yeah. Fear will hold you out from investing, making that risk, saying today is today, enough is enough, I've had enough, I do not fear about what's coming to me, I do not care about to, let me do it first. Let me go. Let me go. And in every point in life, you think about it, the biggest decisions you've ever made is because you stopped fearing making that decision. decision. Yeah, true. It's actually true, yeah. So you see, yeah. fear controls everything. Everything. I wanted to understand, what is fear? You see, now the animal that is a human being has one way of controlling the communal fear, that is living with people, getting spouses. That is, that is still communal fear. Uh, living with someone, even the one, that, the fear that I've told you about, staying in, in a room and then seeing somebody in the dark. You see, that's communal fear. Because if, if you have somebody else, a community of people, someone with you in the room, you wouldn't fear. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. You wouldn't fear. Fear is gone. But there's that still internal fear. Fear. The fear of, am I pretty? Mm. Am I beautiful? Am I hot? Am I funny? What, what do they say about me? Am I cool? Yeah. Will I pay my rent? Will I succeed? Will I be taken? Will this job work? Will I pass? Yeah. Will I how, how is that my life? What is my freaking purpose? That is fear in itself. Asking what is my purpose? Because I feel... I, all these questions. Questions that you can't answer. Yeah. Are we still together? Yeah, we're still together. That is fear. Yeah. Now let me bring you to something I've just introduced. I said questions. Mm -hmm. Questions is another thing that comes with fear. Mm -hmm. And I understood in my depression state. Now, pulling myself out of depression. Remember, I'm telling you my story, how I dug myself through depression. Now, I understood there's something called fear. And under fear, there's something underpinning it. The anchor to fear. Mm -hmm. What fear holds on deeply? Deeply. Mm -hmm. Questions. Okay. Oh, the questions. Was it my fault? Mm -hmm. Was it me? Why me? Why me? Why? Why? Am the I, why is am coming. I ugly? Am I ugly? Am I fat? Is am I stupid? Me? Do I deserve this? Yeah. Am I deserving? Am I honorable? Am I true? Am I right? Am I right? And when the questions become more yeah. that you can't answer, <coughs> mm -hmm. There are only two options. You see, how the brain works. Now, let's get into... Let, let's do a brief introduction because from this, the next part of this series is going to be about the brain. The We're going to dig okay. deeper about the brain and what I discovered about the brain. I'm going to try to simplify the brain the most simplest way ever. I know I'm going to kill a bit of medical terms and everything, uh, explanation, but it's just for purposes of understanding holistically mm -hmm. what depression is and how the brain is... Everything when it comes to depression. Okay. You get me? Yes. Uh, so when you ask yourself too many questions uh -huh. because of fear, mm -hmm. you fear how you look in front of people. Am I pretty? Am I fat? Is my stomach showing? Mm -hmm. Am I boobs small? Is, is my, ass, is my ass big, flat, round chip? Yeah. Do, I, do I still look like a kid? Am I, why am I not growing? Why do I look like a kid? Why yeah. do I look like a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're dressing, do, do I look old enough? Mm. You see? Yeah. Now, the more these questions come in because you fear how you look, you start asking yourself the questions, questions, questions. When the questions boil up, they boil up, they become hot. Starts become steaming hot. Now mm. the steam boils up, boils up. Mm-hmm. And then you become depressed. 
Yeah, because you because don't have you an answer. Because you can't answer any of those questions. I there are you. too many questions for your brain to handle. Yeah. And the problem with the brain, you see, the brain, the brain is a very simple uh, thing. Mm -hmm. It works with question and answer. answer. Is it hot? Yes. Do this. Hmm. Are you feeling like going to pee? To, uh, to pee? Yes. yes. Go to Stand the. Stand up and go to. The Are toilet. you hungry? Yes. yes. Eat. Is it loud? Yes. yes. Turn it down. Is it dark? Yes. P switch on the lights. Are you sleepy? Yes. yes. Sleep. Sleep. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Question answer. It's a question and answer tool. Yeah. I want us to open your mind vault, mm -hmm. and I want you to lock that in. What's the password? W-W-X-D-F-O-B-T-E-S-D. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good. Open it up. Lock it. Mm -hmm. What have you locked? Uh, that the brain works in question and answer. Exactly. Yeah. The brain is a question and answer tool. System, you feed it. Yeah. Whenever it asks a question, you, you feed need it with an to answer. answer. Yeah. So the first thing we've locked in the mind vault, you're just looking in the, in the clean vault. The first thing we locked is the we fact that you have hearts. two hearts. The second thing is that we are all animals. animals. And the third thing we're locking in your brain vault is? That the brain works in question and answer Three mechanism. things, yeah. yes. The brain works as a question and answer yeah. tool or organism or whatever. Or mechanism, you mechanism, whatever, yeah. You get me? Yeah. Now lock the brain. It's locked. Good, let's get out. So the brain works as a question and answer tool. Mm -hmm. And depression comes in when you cannot answer the questions. The questions. And the questions become too, too many. many uh -huh. to, the br uh, to the point that your brain is actually overloaded like a computer. Mm -hmm. Too many questions it can't answer. It hangs, it freezes. It's like when you're using your phone to play a game or something. Guess what point? It's too hot. It hangs. hangs. Yeah. Too hot. It can't charge. It cannot continue. Can't continue. Let it cool, Let it cool down. down. When you're reading, get to a point, your brain feel like it's too hot. I can't understand. Can't it. continue. Let, can't continue. It's too much. Yeah. Now it's becoming stressful. Because mm. the questions are too many. many. Remember, the brain is a question and An answer, answer mechanism. Yeah. And that's when depression, that is the true, simplest description of, of depression. depression. Having too many questions in your brain that you With cannot no answer. answer. Leave alone the fancy, fancy descriptions you'll see everywhere. So, remember, human beings are animals. Yeah. And over the years, the human being, being smart, mm -hmm. the industrialized human being, mm -hmm. became so smart, so, so smart. As evolution, everything was going on, the human being had to devise ways of controlling fear. fear. Okay. That was very important. Mm-hmm. Apart from having a spouse, the human being had to control fear. There's this internal fear we just described called depression. Mm -hmm. And depression comes in different ways, forms and varies. You really can't say depression is caused by one thing. Cause the, and we all know different caused things different cause things. different stressful situations, causing different depressing situations. Yeah. So yeah. the human being, being as smart as he is, mm -hmm. over the years devised the uh, defies. <laughs> okay, the human being over the years, being as smart as he is, devised ways of conquering the internal fear. Okay. The depressing questions that just boggle up your mind and get you depressed. Because okay. we imagine mm -hmm. if each and every person in the world didn't have this thing. How depressing would everyone be if there was no way of curing this, uh, of having an answer to every to question? Every question. You have? Can you can, can you imagine? I get you. You see, in 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 the wild, animals have less stress, less to worry about, only food, and that's why they're living in packs. So the only yeah. fear there is security and what to eat, what where to, to eat. sleep, where, where the park is, and where the park is. Yeah. In our case, it's different. We have work, we have children, we have responsibilities, we have, we have businesses, we lives, interact with yeah. different people all through. And at the end of the day, you are alone. There's so much you're involved, like you're one person handling like a million other things, things. jobs, businesses, kids, the house, the family, family, cleaning. It's 
too much for your brain. By the time you go alone, you cannot share everything that is in your mind with someone. Mm. Whatever you're going through, your whole experience, someone else is going through another different experience. So you, can, you can't weigh them down with your experience. It's, it's even impossible mm. to explain yourself holistically exactly what's in your mind, what's disturbing you, what's causing the stress and the depression. You cannot explain. Mm. Are we together? Yes. So these two great men, uh, men, men, yeah. men, 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 so these two great men uh-huh. came up with principles that the, that the earth picked mm-hmm. that most of the human beings picked. Mm-hmm. Now these two men, their principles are the, the world's most famous principles. But apart from them, the other people came up with different doctrines and principles. Mm-hmm. What am I talking about? Uh-huh. I'm talking about something known as faith. Ah. Yes. Ah, yeah. Faith is the tool that grounds your sanity. And you see, when yeah. your brain starts asking questions, why did he die? Yeah. Am I responsible? Yeah. Was it my fault? Mm. The questions become so many that you can't answer. But these great people came up with something known as faith. Now, faith tells you to live it to God. Yeah, to the a brain, superior being. The brain has gotten an answer. Oh, yeah. yeah. You what, leave is it the, what is the answer? Leave it to God. a superior being. Everything that happens, you, cr- if your brain just has any questions, ah, it's God. Ah, ni mipango ya God. Yeah, ni mipango wa mungu. Ah, ni mipango ya God. Ah, unajua mungu wa kipanga, hmm. ni hivo. Ilikuwa time yaki, God alikuwa najua. I get you, yeah. And faith. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the mind has already gotten an answer. The mind has already gotten an answer. Yeah. So that thing will not keep on hitting on that wall yeah. of your mind. You see, I want you to imagine and picture the mind like a huge brick wall. Okay. Picture. A huge brick wall. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a question, imagine you're punching. A question is one punch on that wall that keeps on punching for eternity. It's not stopping. keeps on punching that wall. And the more it punches, it starts now scraping off some the dust and particles of the wall coming out and the bricks are coming out. Now, imagine that is one question. You have another question. Am I ugly? Keep on punching that wall. Keep on punching that wall. Have like a million questions. The wall will go down. Break down. Now the wall is your sanity. Yeah. That's what I understood when I went there. The wall to some people is death. It's suicide. Yeah. That is the wall. Too many questions when the that wall the brick breaks. wall cannot hold. Yeah. See, it can't defend from all those punches hitting the wall. Every question that you keeps on you keep on asking yourself every day, was I am I to blame for that death? Keeps on punching that wall. Am I ugly? Keeps on punching that wall. Am I? Why? Why is? Am, am I to? Be, keeps on punching that wall. Mm. If you do not have an answer, if you do not have an answer, you are screwed. Now the answer here mm-hmm. is religion. It's faith. Yeah, faith. You leave it to God. Yeah. So when you leave it to God, God picks out. One of those punches, the question that punching the wall, and I tore. And I tore. Gets all. Oh, it's answered. You've it's answered. answered. Oh, yeah. you've answered. This inacha. It, yeah, inacha yeah, I, I get you. I get you. Yes. Inacha kupigangumi. That's what I understood. That is faith. Mm-hmm. For some people who don't practice faith, um, mm-hmm. uh, they practice other forms of things like meditation. Yeah. And all other weird kind of things. People, people practice. Pe- people practice. Yeah. You understand? Now, uh, from there now, you see now, the human is also an interesting being because the Uh human is also a very business-oriented and money-minded person, animal. You see, and over the years, through broken telephone, the information that I I am just passing to you right now that I I discovered has been misconstrued and and, and broken down in different ways, dialects, languages, and lost meaning, Mm. span, pre-span, underspan, everything done to this, all in the name... (laughs) What am I saying? (laughs) All in the name or name, all in the name of the precious coin. Okay. All in the name of money. It's been twisted by man. Everything has been misconstrued. History has been flipped over and over. Broken telephone. Broken telephone over the years. Yeah. Because faith 
True faith grounds you to these principles that answer your questions in a softer way. Yeah. You see, true faith grounds you to a place where um, you can avoid these questions because you, you would live a good and righteous life, holy, quote-unquote, and pleasing to yourself yeah. and to the neighbors around you. Yeah. Faith was crafted in a way that would make people live together in peace and harmony. It's like, with no it's like a moral book. It's like a moral book of guidance. Yeah. Uh, l- l- let's call faith so- something like a, 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 a how to live, how to be human, how yeah. to live how the to human live. life manual for dummies. Yeah, it's a, it's well, a some, manual. A manual for dummies, how to live. You mm-hmm. see, but over the years, I've told you, the human being, the animal, the superior animal, has misconstrued the information, has monetized the information. Yeah, they've started monetizing they've it. They've monetized the information. That's why you and find... And they've changed it. Yes. So there's the religion, faith right now, if mm. I call it like that. Everything is religion, faith. Mm. Every faith is religion. They've lost the true meaning of everything. And th- those are the moral grounding uh, facts about faith and religion that I understood from that point. Okay. That I understood that faith can, plays a very major role in grounding in you. In grounding you. In grounding your brain and, yeah. and, and keeping you in answering those questions. Yeah. You see, if, you, if your brain... Uh, can't handle, and most most people who don't know who don't you see you can't handle because you don't have this information. Because mm-hmm. if you have this information that like I'm passing to you, mm-hmm. and you understand your brain from that point of view, mm-hmm. you can now start managing your own thought and your own mind. Yeah, are you understanding? Yeah. So that faith is not used to be misconstrued to make you think differently or act differently. And the problem with faith is that when you see, faith attacks, it attacks the brain. Okay. Uh, because it's the brain uh, that controls the living animal, the living being. Uh-huh. You get me? Yeah. Uh, the fear of being ugly, or the fear, uh-huh. let me pick another fear, uh, the fear of not getting a spouse or not getting a baby uh-huh. can be monetized by faith. Yeah. With the promise that you'll have a baby. Yeah. God's plan. Yes. 